The extraneous motions are simply tearing up your gluten and you don't want to do that, you know? So just make everything you do utterly efficient. You're looking real good. You need more flour. Yeah. There's, you do have an extraneous motion at the moment, okay? Yeah. You're not, you're trying to quickly get to the dough to where you can handle it. You want every motion to simply accomplish what you're doing, which is incorporate flour with as few tears as possible. It's a little sticky right there. Okay. So what I do is I flip it, right? And then I methodically fold it in on itself. Fold it in on itself. Fold it in on itself. See, I'm developing yes, the dough and I'm folding the flour in, right? Mm -hmm. And at some point it's going to be sticky. Then I'll flour it again and I'll flip it and I'll do the same thing until I can imagine kneading it, which you're very close to. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, what you're doing is extraneous motions. Gotcha. Okay? Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Take the whole thing, bring it to you, push it away with your okay. hand. Okay. Take the whole thing, bring it to you, push it away with okay. your hand. Your dough feels wonderful, by the way. Okay. Okay? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. You're sticking, so you need flour. Gotcha. But just the least little bit because you're there, okay. you know? Yeah, okay, so now let's look at that, that technique on flouring, right? Okay. See how little? A lot finer. Yeah, yeah and dusting in. Just enough so yeah. sticky paint. Yeah, and then flip it and knead it. Yeah. Great, you got it. I think you can start kneading that dough. Yeah. Looks to me like it. You'll stick slightly and just come off it fast, you know? Mm -hmm. I'd flour it again. I mean, finish that fold. Okay. You know, finish what you're doing now, but next time you do it, instead of doing that, try, try going to kneading, okay? You probably still have to flip with the scraper, you know? But you can probably begin to knead and use the lightest of motions, you know? Okay. Yeah. Now when you fold it on yourself, you're not folding flour in. The flour is all on the outside where you need it, not on the inside where you don't want it. Excellent technique, by the way. Thank you. are a natural. Okay, so now we'll give the test. Go ahead, hit it. What do you think? It's there. You're there. You're totally there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. So now, one more thing I hadn't taught you yet. Once you've done, take the side that's got the most seams and flip it and have that always be your top. Okay. Okay? okay. And that way, because you're trying to capture gas, you know? Lightest of dustings, right? Okay. So let's improve your technique a little bit, okay? It's more like this. So it's the very lightest of dusting everywhere, and then do this to be sure it's everywhere. Now, flip it. Use a scraper if you need, but don't use it if you don't. You call. Yeah, you didn't need it. Okay, great. And so you had too much flour in the bowl, so we want some of that flour off there. We're looking to not put flour in now, right? Okay. Now go ahead and knead it. Yeah. And roll it across. Yeah. Okay. Then no, stop. Once you're done, it's just one roll across. Do it again. Yeah. But you know what? You got much too much flour in this bowl. You don't want that flour in your dough. There. Now. Now good. Okay. Even, you know, it's still too much flour. Uh, you're going to be in purgatory not because of your dough, your, the flour you're adding, <laughs> uh -huh. but the flour you left in your Picking bowl. Up. Yeah, okay. Now, go ahead and start there. That's a better one. Fold it to you and knead it. Okay, all right. So pretty good, but not, not quite. Mm -hmm. What you're doing, okay, you're doing this. You're flattening it down with your hand, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of works. But what you're doing is you're pushing down into it. You're not getting the same, as much travel as you can. Mm -hmm. You're much more likely to stick, right? If you do this, Roll it across, see? Roll it across, come off it fast so you don't stick. See how fa fast that's developing? So, okay, no, all right now. Pull it to you, and then use the heel of your hand to roll it across the bowl. Okay, stop, do it now, pull it to you. That's it, that's the way you do it, okay? But the heel of your hand will be more effective than your mm -hmm. fingers, okay? That's perfect, yeah. Feel how quickly that does coming up? Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. It's one swipe either. Don't go for that second swipe. You just turn it again, do it again. Heal your hand, roll it across it. That's how you do it. Okay? Okay, now. One more time now. That's, what do it's you think? There, yeah. It can go a little more though, yep. you know? Just keep doing that. Heal your hand, roll it across. Okay? You're good, okay. Okay. Turn it, yeah. You're good. You could do it a little more. Okay. You know? I mean, slightly more. Now, well, okay, you know what? This is focaccia. I wouldn't do it more. Okay. Yeah, it's going to develop, and we don't want to have to take forever working it out. Okay. But if it was another kind of bread, you could come back a little faster. Okay. okay? It almost wants to be, did that come back, or did I miss it? Ah, you know? See. That's how fast you want it, okay? Okay. You know, it just spreads it out more, you know? Yeah, you're getting there. Okay, yeah. I use a scraper. Okay. 
All right, so I want you to knead the way you want to when you're done, but let me show you my technique for while you're here, okay? No, I, I don't knead um, hard enough, and then I get it all wet. Okay, then... it's not about hard, it's about technique. Okay, okay. so I pull it to me, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to push that hard, but I use my heel and I roll it across the thing. I'm not oh, okay. pushing very hard at all, okay? I pull it to me, it's already too wet though. So slide just a little bit of, flip it, okay. Pull it to me, roll it across the bowl. Mm -hmm. See? It's not, I'm not pushing hard, but I'm getting that okay. roll across the bowl, mm -hmm. okay? With the heel of my hand, okay? That's it. Yeah, go ahead, try it. Yeah, you're getting there. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Just roll it across the bowl with the heel of your hand. If you think you're sticking, come off it faster. You, know? okay. you don't have to bear down hard. It doesn't take a lot of strength. You know, We can do this in our hundreds. <laughs> I think it might be ready. Um, um, it looks wonderful. So. so yeah, let's just do a test here. Great, great technique. Oh, you got it there. Okay. Now you could have gone. Because <laughs> you had technique and style. Now that's what you need. You can go on TV and do the real thing. <laughs> okay. okay, very good, very good. Good technique, yes. Yeah, you're there. Okay, you're there. So Once ready, again, if it wet. was a baguette, you would have gone a little bit more. We would want a little more development. Because, I would need to do it more. Yeah, because this is focaccia, we don't want to spend forever watching it snap back together again. So it's fine. But this you know? is wet, right? Because it's, it's, it's pretty good. The truth is, you could take it. I mean, ask Tom. Where's Tom? Is Tom here or is he outside? Like, Tom would come in and say, that's not even insane. That may be a little disturbed, but it's not even insane, you know? <laughs> So well, how do you make it wetter? You need if like you wanted to make it wetter, if you wanted to go there, right, what you do, and you've developed a great dough, and it'll make wonderful focaccia, right? Okay. But Tom's, you know, that's what bakers do, right? They just try to, artisan, you're always going for the best, right? Mm -hmm. So what you would do to get that wetter, you'd remember you're going to do the flour as a kneading agent still. You have to do so little, so little that you're not going to be reducing, eliminating the effect of the water. Mm -hmm. But you'd come in, you'd dimple this, you put about a teaspoon of water on it, fold it on itself, walk away like he did mm -hmm. for about 10, 15 minutes, come back, and then knead it. And he'd be inc incredibly more flexible, more, okay. more lively and stuff like that. So that's what the play with at home. I don't know that we have time to do that now, yeah. you know, but that's what you could do. Technique-wise, I would keep my fingers out of there and you won't stick as much. See how you're, you know, it just won't stick as much. That's all. All right, let's, what do you think? I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good, but I think you actually should put a little water in again. You know? Just the teeniest little bit and fold it on itself, okay? It's just flower. fill this one and fill yours. Just go ahead, fill this oh, one. I saw it. Yeah, you know? I saw it. You want to be closer to her as far as dehydration. Okay, and now what will you do next? No? Flip. Get the flour everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it actually does you some good. Now flip it. I think I might. You can use this use anytime this? you can yeah, use it. It's, it's Please kind of always folks, never think you can't use the scraper. The last time you flip it, you may still be using a scraper. There is no rule that says you must stop using a scraper, you know? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. You're doing good. Heal your hand, though, right? Just the heel of your hand. Right, okay. It's looking great. Go ahead. Great. Go ahead. One more time. All right, now let's give it a whack. What do you think? I think it's gotten a little dry. <laughs> well, it's dry on the outside, but that's not the problem. You, you, you're pretty good, well hydrated. You might actually put a little teeny bit of water in like he did too. Mm -hmm. But actually, you could stand to slightly more develop your gluten. You can knead it a little more, mm -hmm. okay? But what you might do is go ahead and do like he did. Dimple it a little, put about a half teaspoon of water on it, spread it around, and fold it on itself, wait 10 minutes. Then come back, fairy dust it, and knead it, okay? It'll okay. knead really nicely. It'll be more lively. Yeah, yeah. And knead it about maybe three flips worth, you know? Three flips, you should be able to, you know, get at least a full turn on each flip, you know? And just use the heel of your hand, go across the bowl, turn it, heel of the hand, you know, flip it, you know, pull it back yourself, keep doing that, okay? Just do it fast. Get your hand off it fast. Okay, now let's give it a quick test. Go ahead, do it yourself. What do you think? It's coming up. I think it's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And see, you want this as wet as you can get it to make wonderful focaccia. You know, so it's okay that's really wet. I'm going to show you how to handle it so that it's not not driving you crazy when you handle it. You know, um, but you can also decide. You know what? I'm making this, and I other things going on, and I don't want to struggle this hard, so I'm going to make it a little bit wet drier. And you can do that right now if you want, even. You know, and the reason you flip it now is the out that side. This side's going to be wetter, 
that side's going to be drier, so it'll be easier to knead. Okay. Because okay. I'd flip it all the way around and now pull it to you. Yeah. Flip it all the way no, around? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I just turned the bowl all the way around oh. so you had the dough positioned so you could get, get it to here when oh, you flip okay. it. Yeah, okay. that's all. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so you're good. Now just pull it. Pull it to you and knead it. Just knead it like you always do. Just do this process. Yeah, like that's you it. always do. Yeah. Well, you've been doing it for a like couple hours a couple now. Couple hours. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an old hand now. It's a nice dough, by the way, but it's not, it's just not crazy enough, you know? Um, or wet enough. <laughs> to extraterrestrial enough. We can, we'll turn that metaphor to, you know, whether you're in this solar system or someplace else in the universe. And so this extra kneading, um, what is it doing? It's, what it's doing is getting us so we can tell you about the gluten enough. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, That's okay. Don't worry about that. What do you think? It's not very lively. Well, you know what? Your technique is, you're a little intimidated on technique, so. <laughs> Let's get you. Let's get you comfortable Stuck. again. Let's get you comfortable again. You really don't want hardly any flour, but you need a little bit because you're getting sticky. Okay. So just like bring it to you. And really, okay. you know, get your get your technique where you're really needing it. We're just going across the bowl. Go ahead, okay. do it. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It feels sticky, but then it feels dry too. Yeah. It, well. You need more water back in it, but you are a little sticky on the outside. Okay. 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 I just got to figure out, you, you're really good at getting me to see you doing it wrong, <laughs> but I can't tell quite how. You know? <laughs> yeah, you are probably going down too much, not rolling on it. Now, I just want to do okay. it, and you watch me do it. Okay. okay. The problem is if I do it too much, I get the done, work done for you, and then you don't get to feel how to, how to do the work, you know? So I always want it so that it's kind of longish and at that end, right? Okay. I bring it to myself all the way at this end. Only the heel of my hand, I roll it across the bowl. Okay? I bring it to myself here. Only the heel of my hand, I roll it across the bowl. Okay? I bring it to myself. Only the heel of my hand, I roll it across the bowl, except for you're going to do that now. Okay? okay? Bring it to myself. Only the heel of your hand, hand, roll it across okay. the bowl. I'll turn it. Okay. Bring it to yourself. Bring it all the way to, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Right. And now roll it across the bowl. Yeah, don't slow down at the end. Keep okay. going. Just keep, push it across the bowl. That's it. Yeah. Hey, really, if you watch me, there's panache. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which is different from gun yeah. See? He's got the flip. Which jump is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a ski jump. Okay, That's yeah, okay. Okay? okay. Yeah. All right? Okay. And part of that is coming off quick so I don't stick. Okay. But it's also follow through. Okay. You know? Okay. All right, go ahead, give it a try. I'm bad at bowling, too. But <laughs> you know, you're not bad at this, and you're going to get it fine. You're going to get comfortable as can be with it. You're doing fine. You're not bad at all. You made a great last though. You're getting it, yeah. Okay, you're sticking a little bit. So, you know what? Free it up. The lightest of fairy dust, the okay. lightest of fairy, just the lightest, lightest bit. Of, but that's not fairy dust. That's okay. like sprinkles, okay? Um, okay. There's a technique to that. Flip it. Okay. Oh, no. That's okay. You're good. You're just being intimidated. Okay. Go ahead. Try it again. Flip it? No, no you, I flipped it for you. Okay. Because I want you to do the need. No, no. Nope. You're flustered. <laughs> You now flip it to you. Okay, right. And then the heel of your hand you do with backwards? panache. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. There you go. Oh, you're getting it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. See, what, how, what do you do about that? You can free it up okay. if you want. You know, you're good. You're in charge. You don't. The, oh. you, okay. Um, just free it up, but don't turn it again. Okay. Same place, okay? Now fold it to you, now roll it across. Okay. okay. Um, that's it. Yep. I went the wrong way, though. I should have turned it the other way. Okay. That's better. It's much better. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's just play with that technique. You'll get it, you know. Okay. And you may not use the exact technique, but okay. it's something like what you're looking to do, right, is not, you know, thank you for noticing that you, you were pushing down more. You're not looking to push down. Okay. You're looking to roll it across okay. the thing, you know. And at this stage, if it sticks a little bit, it doesn't matter, because what you're going to do now is make it even, even wetter anyways, you know. From um, the, for the purgatory yeah, thing? Yeah, just okay. little sprinkles, put water on it, fold it on itself, wait tight 10 minutes, okay. come back, and you'll see it. It'll become much more lively. Gonna, yeah, that's, I have more confidence. With I would have done that. I mean, I would have used a scraper at that. As soon as I see it sticking anywhere, I use okay. a scraper, you know? It's my friend. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you're good. And Lee, part of what's, the difference is you're still intimidated. That's, that's slowing you down. You just got to get it that you're in charge. It's going to happen. You know, <laughs> you may mess a couple up, but you're going to get that feel. You know, you cannot break the dough 
by you know being rough with it or making wrong motion, you know. I like David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it on him. <laughs> I'm a target. Uh, if you get some of it on the dough too, the right amount. I don't care how much you get on me, you. you know. Is that still fairly wet though? I mean, I can't tell whether I've gotten it. Right, right now, what do you think about this? I think it looks great. I it mean, does I'm, look great, and okay. it, wet is good. Okay. For focaccia, you're I mean, fine. I didn't go too dry though. No, you didn't go okay. too dry at all. You're good. You know? Okay. Good. You're good. Yeah. Okay, because what we're going to do now is we're going to shape our baguettes, and then we're going to go right to making pizza. The problem is, if you use a pan, then the pan has to warm up first, and your dough slowly warms. And you get a nice even rise, whereas a baguette wants all those great big holes from that massive bottom heat immediately hitting the dough and making it go way up. So pans get in between the dough, and you don't want that. So instead, we put them in a couche, right? And we let them rise in the couche, and you flour the heck out of your couche. You have to. Shape your baguette, and I'll show you how to shape it. And one side's always going to have a, there's always going to be a, a downside and an upside. The seamy side is going to be the downside, right? You put it into the couche upside down. So when you take it out onto your peel to go into the oven, the part that is most risen is now on the bottom. And the part that needs to rise more is on top because it's easier to rise on top and you get a more even rise. You want a wooden board that's nice and big. These other surfaces, I can work on them, but they're much harder. In order to shape, we can't have the dough stick to it. If we put flour on, we wouldn't get any resistance from the board and we need resistance. We need friction. That's how we shape. I just get my hand a little oily and I spread it all over the board. And I, I need a little more than that, I can tell. But I can hear my hand rubbing. If I can't hear that rubbing, I have too much oil, I know right away. If it can slide around without creating the fric friction, it's not going to work. But you hear my, hear my rubbing? If I slathered the oil on there, you wouldn't hear that. You know? And that's, that tells me I'm going to get friction and that's what I need. And see there, that's where I can't hear me. And too much oil, you know. That's okay, I'll spread it around and I'll stay away from that corner and I'll grab oil from there as I need it. You want it to at least double before um, you use it. And these, are, these have all easily doubled now. So what I did just now was this side here is drier. It's going to be my outside. It's going to be easier to roll it, right? I don't want it to be wet, right? Now I'm going to fold this wet part on itself. I kind of folded the loose long ends in, fold the wet part in, right? Now I want, I, even though it's going to be a little sticky, I want the seam side down, okay? And now I'm using my thumbs and my fingers. Do you see that I'm actually kind of tucking under while pressing and rolling? And I'm going really light because this is a really sticky baguette. Yeah. And in fact, it needs a little more oil to, to finish it out. And as I do that, as I use my fingers and my thumbs, I also put, have an outward pressure. There's not much pressure at all. If I was pressing hard, I'd be flattening this into the board and sticking. Just a little bit of pressure to guide it. My fingers are tucking under, my thumb is tucking under. That's how I do it. That's not how Hamelman says to do it. You know? But that's okay. We can do it different ways, right? And I, you know, two at the most each person make because we're not going to have time to bake them all or rise them. You can do them more at home, and I think you should. This dough will sit quite nicely. You can even wait till tomorrow if you keep it cold. Um, and then refrigerator or can it stay at a cold room temperature? A cold room would probably be okay. You know, if you're just doing it tomorrow. If you're going longer than that, I'd put it in the fridge. Eventually it'll start to eat itself, you know. They'll run out of starch, they'll start eating. And then you can use it as a starter? Yes, you can, exactly. You quick learner here. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, so. Pressing down, pushing in with my fingers. And my thumb, people see that back thumb thing? See how it's tucking under each time? And it's, I'm actually never rolling it. Do you see that? It's kind of staying on the board and I'm simply doing the pressure and tucking under, you know? That's it. Somebody ready to try? Yeah, you don't, you, you, no, you're not doing that. You, you do, what you do is the motion. Okay. You're moving out with your hands, okay? Yeah. yeah. Fingers tucking under, thumb tucking under, rolling with the top of your hand. Fingers tucking under, thumb tucking under, rolling with the top of your hand. It takes a while to get that motion, but try and do that. The, the tease it out that way, what's going to get you is this dough is really wonderfully relaxed. Yeah. But if you try and pull it out, 
Some are just going to snap back okay, on you. That, you have to gently roll did it out. That do it? You're in good shape, but you didn't do it the right way. Oh, okay. okay. Can I try it again? You certainly next? can. I want you to. The uh, relaxation is the fact that we've let this rise. We disturbed it as little as possible and dumping it out. And yes. By cutting it, these long ways actually helps us. Yeah, it helps. It helps you to get the shape you need. Yeah. yeah. Now you can handle it. I mean, try to have the seam side, like the most disturbed side down. So, okay, that's fine. But yeah, flip it over. Yeah, okay. And now, yeah, okay. But so, can I show you? Yeah, okay. I can't get it. I know it's hard. It, it's like you, train, you have to train your hands. See, only the very top of my hand is touching it. My okay. th fingers are pushing it under. My thumbs are pushing it under. You know. Okay. Um, yeah, fingers and thumb, and roll it out with your hand. And you might need a little bit of oil, because see how it's sticking right there? That's not helping you at all. So go to where I just did it. Just move it over to there. Just pick it up and, yeah, right, that's it. Yeah. Because you know what? See how if it sticks in the middle, then what you're going to do is make the middle really thin, because you're yeah. pulling stuff away oh, from the I middle. Okay. You know? Cool. This is, it's not easy to get this. In fact, I think after she's done, I'll show it again. Just keep watching it, you know? Um, is that, will that be okay? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I think that this, it all, they're all okay. By the time they bake, they're okay. But this thinness here, it's going to be, it's going to, it may get like burned even because okay. this is so thick, that's so thin. Yeah. You know, so I'd say try another one. Okay. You know, um, I'll try. we'll get to a point where you can try it, you know, but it'll be a while. Okay. I got to get everybody that's taking the class and try it, but then we'll get you to try it. Okay. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Okay. Now just start, yeah. Fing just tuck your fingers in. Yeah, you're doing better. Okay. Oops. Now you're oh. sticking though, so hang oh. on. Okay. Just, where's the bottle of oil? Right here. Okay, go for it. Remember, hands are just barely touching the top. Mostly you're worried about your fingers and your thumb. And your hand kind of just drops on it a little bit and moves it out by accident, okay? It's your fingers and thumbs rolling it. Okay, let me show you. It's hard. This is hard. I've tried. But, you know, if you just keep doing it at home, you will get it. All of a sudden, you'll be doing it, you know? Um, anybody that's ever had the job, you learn it in a day because you have to keep trying to get it, yeah. you know? And by the end of the day, you're just rolling them out like everybody else, you know? But it's not easy the first time. I wouldn't I want to pretend that it was. This can, it'll work. Okay. We can do this one like this, but I want to show you, show again, okay? Okay, you're welcome. No, that's good. Oh, that's passion. People see what I'm doing? It looks easy from here. Yeah. But, okay, so let's, let's actually look at my motions, okay? My hand is kind of resting on it, right? And then I'm just like pulling my fingers under it, and then I'm pushing it away with my thumb. My hand's kind of resting on it as I do it, and I just I move out a little bit while I do it. You want the bread to actually separate from the board while you're... Well, it ba no, it, it, yeah. it doesn't really separate it, but it comes really close, you know? But the very bottom is staying on there at all the times. If you look at it, see that? Yeah. It's not really, you know? And it's really, it's... I think what's happening is when you try and do it and you haven't done it for the first time, you forget that you can actually do whatever you want to do with your fingers, you know? So your fingers can actually come into this, you know? And my hand's barely touching the dough right now. And I do a thing. And then as I go to do my thumb, my hand gets a little bit more on it and I kind of push away. But by the time my hand, you know, has pushed away, my thumb is now there doing that. And then my fingers do it, you know? So you don't have to coordinate, make your thumb, your fingers, and hands do it all at the same time. You just do it so that each one is doing their part in rapid motion. And that's it. Okay, does it look a little easier now maybe? Yep. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. Just go right through there and cut it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want to have that extra motion, right? Of all this. Yeah. Excuse me, what's your name again? Ziggy. What's your name? Ziggy. Ziggy. Thank you. So as you come up, say your name, Please. and then we'll have we'll have your number. Still long enough. It's long enough. Yeah, your style was not not there yet, but uh -huh. you'll get there.
Okay, so you're making it hard on yourself with <laughs> the cutting method. For one thing, this side's going to cut better. But you, you might find it easier with a dough knife. But it's, it's not so much you're kind of trying to saw it. Mm -hmm. You're not sawing it, you're chopping it. Okay? <laughs> so you're just doing this. You free it. Yeah, and now you're ready to go. You know? And see that one, I did it rough enough, I'd fold this on itself. You know? uh -huh. This is nicely oiled down here, so what I do is I come in, do this like this, right? Bring it to the air, and now start doing your, you know, your thing. Yeah, good, good fingers, good hands. You got it. Yeah, you're doing good. Now pull. You, you, you motion out, you don't even pull, you just kind of like your hands move out with it as you're going. Yeah. Sticking a bit there, but I yeah, think we're it's, close enough, right? It's pretty wet, yeah, too, so it's harder. See, my fingers come in, they pull it in. My thumb goes there. Top of my hand moves it out. Okay. You don't have any pizza seasoning with you, do you? If you do it, if you get some of that and toss a little in the, in the um, sauce, it'd be great. By the way, folks, I will confess that I assume since you're taking a bread class that there's nobody who can't eat gluten here. <laughs> we try to remember for most classes, but I thought, no, the bread one, I don't think I have to worry about that, you know? Okay, so. This is. <laughs> well, the thing is, these are being so wet. I think what. It's really wet, isn't well, it? Well, I think a mistake that people are making is I wouldn't. I'm going to start over here. Okay. <clears throat> when you flipped it out, you lost your dry side. That makes it harder. Uh -huh. So I think actually some of you have to do a very tight, very slight angel dust, fairy dust, because um, it's being so sticky, it's hard to work, you know? So very. Now, turn it over. now I just cut it, right? Now you just cut it. You won't turn it over at all. You're going to okay. cut it. Okay. Yeah. And just cut and separate, right? Cut and separate. Okay. Like now you're going to actually put the dry side down. Just once again, free it with the, with the, with the knife, right? With the scraper. Yeah. Okay. There's a dry side to that? Well, maybe not. Let's try a little more flour. Okay, so I tried to skip a step that I guess maybe we should do. Time-wise, it's hard to do it right now. But I get to show you something else. You're going to wait on yours. Everybody's going to do this real quickly, okay? Take one shot at it. We're going to give this its intermediary proof, which I skipped because of time. And I can get away with it, but you all can't. Uh, so we need to do it. So what you're going to do is... You're going to come over, take a piece of dough that's big enough to make two baguettes, and you're going to round it. And you round it by, once again, using the heel of your hand and your little finger to tuck it under as it tightens up on itself. And then once it's done that, we're going to take a clear part of the table, put a drop of oil on it, and let it sit here for about five minutes. When you come back to do it, it should be much less sticky. Okay. So everybody wants to quickly come through, round a piece of dough about this big, which you cut into two baguettes. Can I try it with these? Yes, you go ahead, try it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Little, f your little fingers tucking it under, peel of your hands tucking it under. Yeah, you don't want to spin it. You, okay, let me show you again. Okay. A little bit of flour. Right, thank you. Just enough flour that my hand's not sticking to it. It's not really, I'm not spinning it. At the bottom is staying in one place, right? I'm tucking it under and turning it back. And see how tight it, how it tightens up? Yep. Bulls, yes, that's how you make bulls. So take another piece of mine and try it. Um, flour it lightly, just flat, before you even take it out of the bowl. Just lightly flour the top of it. Okay. Fairy dust it. 
That's, he does. He actually is a very good fairy duster. <laughs> it's ready? Okay. We're going to stop for a minute, which is good because this will dry out while, while we're stopped, okay? Um, and we're going to look at this. This is pretty much where it should be at. We finally got it, okay? That one is actually a failed sponge because we didn't catch it the first time. But you'll see how it's rounded up rather than falling in. Okay, so once again, it's like pull it under with your little finger, push it with the other one. That's it. Tuck yeah, it yeah, under. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. You got it. I got it. Okay, I got yeah, it now. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Um, then that, that would be one baguette, you know? Yeah. All right. So just come over, try your best at this. You can try it at home. You've seen the motion. It's going to be on film, so you can watch it again. Meanwhile, I'm going to go get our. Did I make a. I never made a focaccia, so I have to demonstrate with somebody else's. Can I demonstrate with yours? Okay, cool. I'm going to demonstrate um, how to stretch it out on a peel. It's going to go right on a peel. I don't like cornmeal because it smokes too much. I like semolina flour. It's got the same coarseness. You want your, you're trying to put something on your peel that works like um, ball bearings. So your, your um, focaccia will slide off, okay? This dough was made about, it was finished about probably 12.30 last night. Yeah. I would have liked to have been done, done earlier. <laughs> I kind of woke myself up doing it. It could say rising all that time. Oh yeah, cold is good, you know. If I was doing um, baguettes or something and was gonna do the intermediary proof with that where you're resting it right there, then no big deal, I just grab a hump. You know, grab a hunk and pinch it off. But because I don't want to work this any more than necessary, if you'll hand me the, um, yeah, one of those. And really, if you have time, the ideal way to do this, I'll show you. We won't use that piece right away. It'll be one of the last pieces we use. You will work it a little, and then you've got to pay for that because it takes a long time before you can use it again. And what I do is the same thing. I do an intermediary proof. But I, what I would like to do if I'm doing the intermediary, inter intermediary proof, I'd like to do it several hours before I make pizza, put it on a tray and stick it in the fridge and let it relax. See, this, I might be able to shape this towards the end of our meal, the end of making pizza, but it's going to take a while because I just tensed it up a whole lot by doing that. You know? So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cheat. I recommend you do this at home, though. It'd be a lot easier to get a nice, nice round pizza. I'm probably going to have some geography to my pizzas. <laughs> you know? And then at a the point I decide, okay, that's enough. Then I bring it down here, and then I do stretch it a little bit. But you'll see, even this, even though it's been relaxing forever, if I try and stretch it too much, it just wants to snap back. You say it takes, uh, it takes a while for it to relax again. Half hour or something like that? Or? Um, the, like the ones we yeah. just did? Yeah. Hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can, might be able to make that work, but you'd have a hard time. Yeah. You know? Really, the ideal would be let it sit overnight in the morning, round it, Put it on a tray, put it back in the fridge, let it relax till you know an hour or two before you do it. Take it out then, you know. Um, let it get back up to room temperature. It doesn't really matter okay. with that one as much because it's the massive heat is not going to let there be any mess ups. <laughs> It'd be nice for it to be as warm as it can because it's going to cool down your stones, you know, um, or your oven if you have an oven. But see, I managed to get that to come out pretty easy without a lot of work. In fact, the less I work, the easier it is. You know, the harder I work, the harder it is. Now the big question is, yeah, it's got to move. If it doesn't move, you're in trouble. Okay. And you always do this on metal peel, not a wooden peel. Um, actually, we have a wooden peel, and I'd do it on a wooden peel if I had it. But metal peel is a little easier. Okay. Um, but either one will work. This is just hardy kale. You know, it's had, it had the right kind of weather. It got cold early, so it's, it's totally hardened off. You know? Other years, if we had a mild, mild um, winter, um, it wouldn't have been hardened off enough yet, and it would have taken a bigger hit. And in fact, I thought the arugula would still be good, but it's toast. There's nothing happening with that arugula out there. After the, after the past few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much to my disappointment, I love arugula on pizza. So I'm putting this down first because the hot sauce will help to wilt it down. Usually I like to pre-cook it a little bit, but I wanted to get going on one because I've got this sitting on here for too long. And something else I didn't do here, but I'm going to do with the rest. Though we had a good sunny day here, so it's less of an issue. But Back to gardening. It turns out that in the wintertime, this time of year when there's not enough light, plants can't use all the nitrogen that they're taking up. They store it in the form of nitrates. If you eat it, 
<laughs> and you can actually make nitrosamines. So it's not as good for you. So you, at the end of a sunny day, they've used most of it. But I just learned from a wonderful book called 21st Century Greens that the greatest concentration of nitrates are in the stems. So normally, I just kind of chef and odd and eat the stems too. But in the winter, I'm trying to teach myself to take it off the stems. You know? Something I always do, by the way, which a lot of people don't do, is I always try, get, try and take it as close to the edge as I can without spilling it on the peel. Because it's going to swell, and I don't like a great big piece of dough without anything on it, you know? And then, cheese, and that's it, and then it goes in the oven. But first I'll check and make sure it'll slide, because once you get out there, it's a drag to have to come back in again. Yeah. Any questions about that process? Does anybody want to try shaping the next one? of that dough do we use that we prepare? Um, you would use a piece about that size, which should make a nice one on the peel, you know. You get to see what I cut right here. So, I mean, I can do another one, and you don't have to do any, but if somebody wants to do it, it's fine. But if you want me to do another one first, I can do another one. Yeah. Okay, all right. I make these a little bit too wet, and I haven't developed the toss-up-in-the-air technique, so yeah. they'll stick to the ceiling really well if I try these, you know. So I don't toss up. I just kind of let it stretch itself out, and then I finish it like this. Well, you can try that. It's going to be harder to work, but you're welcome to try one. You know, I made a dough because I knew the years wouldn't sit. They should sit overnight, you know. Oh, I see. Um, but we can try one and see how it works just to learn and see what the difference is. I've done it. You can do it, you know. It's just that it's even more resistant to staying out when you pull it, you know. When you stretch it, it's just got a lot of resilience left. You work so hard to make it so bouncy, it's still bouncy, you know. And this one, it's really hard to not underbake these. You're real tempted because they look good on top, but they're done when the bottom is browned, not when the top looks done, you know? So they have to stay in a little longer sometimes. And, and how come you, you put the kale down first and then the sauce? Well, it just helps it to, to also, it helps it not burn in the hot oven, you know, kind of protects it because we're using a wood-fired oven. The bread should be good. So now we're going to score it. Scoring 20 degree mm -hmm. angle. You don't want to do it straight down because it'll spread out. You want it to come up. Okay. Actually, I thought I was going to do this along the seam. I think I'll do the rest of this along the seam. <laughs> you like the diagonals on that? Okay. I do like the diagonals. The straight one there was because of that seam. Oh, okay. Otherwise, I'm, it, it, it doesn't matter at all. It's just a matter of... of what I'd like to do too, a lightweight little dry dish towel. I want to brush off some of this um, flour. I don't like that much flour on my baguettes. That's the problem with the inversion thing. I have a, I, I'm kind of mixed about it. I think it gives a better rise, but I get all this flour on it. I don't want to have flour on it, you know? Some people like the flour, and indeed you do that whole basket thing where the flour shows up, you know? Yeah, it's all aesthetic. Okay, that's it. We're going to get to see you. Side slide it off, yep. Side slide. The side slide. I sent it to somebody. I saw him in the dark. I said, nobody should leave till I show this. And I wasn't trying to make it stick around and do some cleaning. It really is. You have to know this piece, okay? Um, and actually, I can show it on this. I won't mess with anybody's baguette. And I can show it multiple times. So as you get close, basically, you have to be able to wet your finger. If you don't wet your finger, you'll get a false read. And this is the reverse of how you tell your dough is done, done kneading. Because when you're done kneading it, you've totally wound it up, right? And it springs back immediately. This has been relaxing forever. There's no spring left in it. So it should stay down. See how it stayed down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't do this, because it might <laughs> fall. You gently, gently push it in. And you and wet, your finger so it won't stick. wet your finger so it won't stick. Yeah. Otherwise, you pull it back up to get a false read. Gotcha. You think it's not ready, and it is. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be very, this is probably the hardest part, you know? 
Just play with it. I recommend if you made two breads, try both of them. It's slightly different. You know, when you okay. think the one's ready, try it, but save one and give it another few minutes. Okay. And see how they better. Because each baker is going to have a slightly different timing for when their bread goes in. You know, depending on how they make their bread. You know, it's not like, that's why the book cannot be trusted. It'll tell you to use too much flour. It'll tell you a certain amount of time for when your dough's ready. They don't know how hot your, how hot your room is, how hot your dough was. You know, there are all these factors that mean that you cannot tell by a clock. You have to be able to tell by biofeedback. That's why it's like gardening, because in gardening too, you have to go by the biofeedback, and this is a living thing, and it tells you when it's ready. It tells you when you needed it enough, and it tells you when it's time to bake it, you know? And for some, you'll learn, you know, as you do different breads, for some, because they have incredible oven spring, it can come back very slowly, it's no big deal, because it'll spring big time in the oven, but I don't know if everybody heard me, if you've got one that you're putting in and it's coming back a little bit, slash it even deeper. Because there's loads of room for expansion in the oven, it's going to really expand. So if you don't slash it deeper, it'll have a little outie. You know? It'll just blow out on the side or something. And that's not nearly as pretty. You know? Remind us what the first dough we worked is going to make. The first dough you worked is going to be baguettes. Oh, the second the dough you okay, worked yeah. is going to be focaccia or pizza. Yeah. Do you spray the baguettes before they go in? No, you spray them once they're in. Once they're in? Yeah. And only once? No, about twice. Twice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, I don't recommend spraying in home ovens with light bulbs and glass doors because you can break them and you can also ruin elements. What I recommend instead is go to a, a junk market, not a flea market, because at the flea markets, everybody thinks that old cast iron is worth $10 million, mm -hmm. and find a trash, small cast iron pan. Okay. Put that in when you turn the oven on, so it's loaded with heat, mm -hmm. drop ice cubes in it. You won't get burned by steam, uh -huh. but it'll throw uh -huh. steam off for about 10 minutes. Uh -huh. you know? If you use your regular cast iron, you're ruining it. You know? yeah. It totally ruins the finish. You know? mm -hmm. But an old, junky one, you know? and you want something like cast iron because you need a lot of heat. You know? I wouldn't use Pyrex. It's, it's good for shock, but it's not, good, not that good. You know? That's pretty severe. It's cast iron is the way to go. You know? The flavor inside comes from the crust. After the bread cools, the flavor is migrating back in. If you wait, if you eat it too fast, the flavor hasn't made its way back in again. You know, the caramelizing on the outside is what's making a huge piece of the flavor. So letting it cool enough to give it time for that flavor to be sucked back in by this sponge of starch that's right there ready to suck up flavor will give you better flavor. Yeah, that's still caramelizing right now. Yeah. And yep. It will be for another 10 minutes yeah. or so. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>